Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my 2023 luxury wish list. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my favorite luxury bags for the year 2023. So if these are the kinds of videos that you like watching, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to connect with me in my socials, it's at TrishDLF. So the items on this list for this year are obviously things that I'm not going to be getting. I just did my 2023 luxury bag collection and I currently have a lot so I'm not really looking to add any to my current collection. I think I'm going to enjoy my collection for now. However, these are the bags that I've had my eye on for a while and these are bags that I've been pretty obsessed with. These are bags that have been on my mind and I think that they are all very beautiful and they are definitely something that I would consider adding to my collection down the line. So I'm not adding them to my collection anytime soon but these are bags that I've definitely got my eyes on. Okay, so number one is the Fendi Baguette in Caramel with Gold Hardware. This is the new style of the Fendi Baguette, and I'm just really obsessed with Fendi's current caramel color. They have this color in their other bag styles as well, which is actually the next bag on this wish list. It's also in the caramel from Fendi. But yeah, the first time I saw the caramel color from Fendi, I really fell in love. And especially in that plush leather of the baguette, I think it looks really gorgeous on it. I really love the new style of the baguette with the top handle and the shoulder strap. I think it's really casual, and I think it's a bag that really fits my style. The only thing I'm not sure about with the baguette is that it's kind of really soft so with regard to wear and tear this is a bag that might wear out fast. So with regard to wear and tear, this is a bag that might wear out faster than others, especially in this caramel color. However, if like money were no object, then this is definitely a bag that I would buy. Next is also from Fendi and it's the mini peekaboo in the caramel color as well. So I do have a peekaboo over there, the blue one, but it's the older style. The newer style of the mini peekaboo right now is like the medium. They kind of directly copied the original medium size and now it has glazing on the sides. And the leather is definitely thicker because the older peekaboo uses a very soft Napa leather which is very scratch prone but the mini peekaboos right now they actually use this thicker leather and it definitely looks more hard wearing especially because of the structure. It has glazing outside now for the sides and also it has a thicker strap so the old mini peekaboos have a very thin strap which is like maybe half an inch it's probably like half an inch but the ones on the newer peekaboos have thicker straps although you also have the option to buy different straps to like style it up but yeah the ones that come with the mini peekaboos right now are thicker so again i fell in love with this bag mainly because of the caramel color if you've seen my latest handbag collection video most of my bags are in black and i don't really have like light neutrals so it's my goal to bring in more neutrals to my collection that's why i've been drawn to a lot of the caramels the tans brown so those are currently the bags that i'm looking at because i really want my final bag collection to be more of like a mix of the neutrals so half would be black and the other half would be in the lighter neutral so I'd have a perfectly curated collection. The Fendi Peekaboo is such a classic design so I think that it would look very classy and gorgeous especially in this caramel color. Next on my list is the Gucci Marmot in the Aria collection so this not in the original chevron pattern as to how the original Gucci Marmots came out. This one is the collection with the leather quilting with squares and vertical lines. So I did have the original Gucci Marmot in the the gold hardware before and I thought that was a really amazing bag. I had that for a while. I actually made a review on it on this channel because I really love that bag. However, when I got my Chanel flap bag and as well as my reissue, the style kind of became redundant because they're both in black leather and gold hardware. So I had like too many of the same style already so I had to let go of the Gucci Marmot. However, I told myself that if the Gucci Marmot came out in the silver or ruthenium hardware then I would definitely repurchase. At that time when I sold my old Gucci Gucci Marmont. It didn't have a silver or ruthenium hardware yet, but now they already came out with a silver and ruthenium hardware, so I'm so happy because I actually have the option to buy it back now. So the silver hardware isn't like my other bags, but definitely if I were to exchange it, I would trade it with my Chanel Boy with the ruthenium hardware. So I actually haven't done a full review on the Chanel Boy bag, but I actually have a lot of issues with this bag. The flap is actually not so practical to use when you're out and about, and the shoulder straps actually fall, especially when you have it 
double strap on your shoulder. So that's kind of a hassle for me. And lastly, it's a bag that you have to take care of because it's so structured and it's in this really boxy shape. You can't really have it on your hip like as a crossbody for a long time because if you do, it's going to dent the bag because the boxiness of it doesn't really have a structure. So I noticed that a lot of the pre-love Chanel boys, if the previous owner doesn't really take care of it, then the wear eventually shows. But with the Gucci Marmot, I noticed that it was such a breeze to use. You can see it in my review, which will be linked. That was such a practical bag. It was so light. I didn't have problems with it. If I put it on my shoulder, the straps don't fall out. I could wear it crossbody. I could bring it anywhere. I didn't really have to think about it. Even the closure, the clasp, and the flap, it was very easy to use. It was something that whenever I went out, it was just very easy to bring out stuff and do all the things that I have to do. And I didn't really have to think about it. So I really loved that bag. So definitely, if I were to get that bag, I would definitely replace it with a Chanel Boy. A lot of people would argue that the Chanel Boy is a classic and it's definitely something to keep in your collection. However, I don't really keep bags that don't work for me. I feel like if you've watched me on this channel for a while, you know that I really tend to sell off things that don't work for me. So yeah, the Gucci Marmot Aria with the silver hardware. So I would definitely pick either the black color or the gray color with the silver or ruthenium hardware. And if I ever do get that bag, it would definitely have to be a replacement for the Chanel Boy because they're very similar. The Chanel Boy is also black with ruthenium. Again, I can't have two of the same styles or vibe in my collection, so I would definitely have to exchange this if I do get that one. Next on my list is the Row Bindle Bag. So the Row is the brand by Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen and it's more of like a very understated brand. Still very expensive bags but with absolutely no branding on them. I think lately in my bag collecting journey, I just got really full of the designer brands. Even the low-key luxury brands like didn't seem very low-key anymore. Like the Fendi, the Reissue. Like it got to a point when even those bags don't really seem very low-key to me anymore because they're being talked about more often now even the Louis Vuitton puzzle bag even Celine even the Celine box bag like it got to a point when I was consuming so much information and so much media about these bags that I felt like they weren't actually low profile anymore so at one point I was already looking at bags from the row because the row is actually like legit no one has the row back then in my country Fendi, Loewe, and Celine didn't really have their own boutiques yet they didn't have their own physical boutiques Fendi was carried at the department store as well as Celine like some other smaller boutiques had them and like the department store kind of set up but it was only recently like maybe the past three to four years when their own physical boutiques started popping up and now that they have their own boutiques I feel like they're more exposed now and more people actually know about them and more people actually carry them around so it got to a point when I felt like everyone was actually carrying the low profile bags especially the ones from Celine and Lueve. So I started researching on more low profile bags or at least bags that you really don't see around. So that's when I found the row. And the bindle bag actually looks really good. It's kind of geared more towards today's fashion. Like they're really trying to bring back the hobo design. So the row bindle bag, I mean honestly like in the pictures it looks like a garbage bag. Like design wise I don't really think that there's much to it. It just looks like a regular shoulder bag. It looks very simple and honestly doesn't look designer at all but I feel like that's the point. So at one point I was just really looking for a really good quality handbag that was under the radar and the row definitely fit that. However I tried looking for the bindle bag in a lot of the websites. It's so weird though like on the row you can barely buy anything. Most of their bags are out of stock and then in the department store websites that carries the row the bindle bag isn't available anymore so I feel like that bag is actually like an old design already or an old style. They have newer styles with like the hobo effect but I don't really like it so definitely I would have to buy the bindle bag somewhere else. Either pre-loved or I'd have to wait for them to restock that bag because it's a bag that I really like the design of. Next bag is the mini Lady Dior. So this bag has been in my wish list for as long as I can remember probably ever since I started this channel. I think this bag has also been in my luxury wishlist videos since the very first wishlist video that I did. I really love this bag and honestly I feel like after I get this bag like it would definitely complete my collection. I wouldn't really need any other bags like any other bags that would come in would only just be 
like an additional already. They won't really be like the stars in my collection. Like definitely the flap backs are the stars in my collection. They're, they're like the foundations. And I think a mini Lady Dior, if I'm able to add a mini Lady Dior into my collection, that would also be one of the foundations to my collection. I would really love the mini Lady Dior in like the Lotus Pink. I'm not sure if it's Lotus Pink or like Pearl Lotus or any light pink or silver actually. So I really need that perfect gown bag and the mini Lady Dior would really fit just that. Like that's one of the bag necessities that I don't have yet. Like in terms of function, I kind of more or less have bags for every function. I have bags for like date nights, casual, clubbing, vacations, gym. I kind of more or less got everything covered except for like the formal occasion bag. Which is why I feel like the mini Lady Dior really needs to get in my collection stat because I've always known that that handbag would complete my collection. So for this mini Lady Dior, the only reason that I haven't added it to my collection is because one, I haven't found the perfect pre-loved price or piece. Like if I go pre-loved, there's definitely a price range that I'm looking at, a price range and condition that I'm looking at. So when I buy pre-loved, that's usually what I do. I have to match the price range to the condition that it's at. And in my journey of buying pre-loved, I haven't found that perfect match where the condition was in the price that I was willing to pay. So for the mini Lady Dior, I'm just waiting to find it in that perfect price and condition. But if I'm never able to find it, then I might have to end up buying it brand new but we'll never know when that will be because brand new price is very expensive so maybe in the long 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 future when I've done everything in my life that I could buy a brand new Lady Dior. <laughs> and finally for the last pack on this list it's the Bottega Veneta Jodi in the caramel color in either the small or medium size. But the medium size is so freaking expensive brand new so I don't know like what my chances are of getting that bag if I would actually even consider getting it because yeah, it's really expensive, brand new. So I was never actually into Bottega. I never really understood the hype of the weaving and everything. I know that it kind of got trendy like the mini Jodies but I always thought that it looked so simple and like i don't know not worth the money especially because it's easily copied like there's no outer branding so it's a design that a lot of stores can actually copy without necessarily producing a fake bag so it's like an easily copied design so i wasn't really interested in it however recently i was able to touch a vintage bottega handbag and the leather was so freaking soft like the weave the intrachato handbag i was able to touch it um like because I do go to the Bottega store and I touch their bags, but because they're new, I think that's why like it's not as soft, obviously. So when I was able to touch an actual vintage Bottega, I was like, wow. Like, I really fell in love because the leather was really good. It was so soft. Like, it's softer than my Fendi Peekaboo or my Chanel Lambskin. Like, it was just so buttery soft. I think, like, more towards the levels of Balenciaga. Kind of that soft, but it's lambskin, so it's much softer. And it was just really luxurious. So I really fell in love with the quality of it. And that's when I really fell in love with the brand. Because I was like, oh, this is a long-standing brand. I tend to love bags that have, like, a long-staying power. You know, bags that you'll be able to use forever. That's why I love my Chanel's. But when I saw that vintage Bottega handbag, also probably, like, more than 15 years old already as well. And it was just in, like, really great condition and it was just very soft. I just fell in love with the leather and so I was sold with Bottega and now I started on like this crazy frenzy over Bottega handbags and now I want a Jolie bag. So yeah, feeling it in person, you actually really have to touch it in person for you to fall in love. So now I want the Jolie handbag and it has to be in the small or the medium size because I really love that slouchy look, like the row bindle bag. I want that same vibe. So with the Bottega Jolie, I think I'll only be able to achieve that with either the small or the medium size and I think it looks really gorgeous. That's a bag that I feel like will wear very beautifully over time and I like having stories with my handbags. I like being able to wear it and creating a story with it, creating memories with it. So I feel like if I'm able to get that bag, that bag is definitely going to age well with me. And lastly, I have like a little bonus, the Loewe puzzle bag and the tan color. It's always been my radar. I like the design of it. I've seen the Loewe puzzle bag for years. I, I watch a lot of videos on it. I see a lot of people have it. Like it's been known to be one of the under the radar bags for a while. And I've always thought it was a pretty bag, but I never really set out to get it. 
However, it is a bag that I could consider but maybe like last priority. I only really like it because of the color because again, I'm trying to build like a more neutral collection of like browns and caramels. So I would love the Louisville puzzle in the tan. With regard to function wise and design wise, like I'm not like obsessed with the bag but it's something that I could have. Like, I wouldn't mind having it although I'm not obsessed with it. So that's why it's just like considered as a bonus here in this video. So that's about it. That's my entire luxury wish list for 2023. I realized it's quite a lot of bags. Usually wish lists would only be like three to five max bags but I feel like I definitely went over that. Again, these are bags that I'm not going to get in 2023. These are bags that I'm just obsessed with this year but will not necessarily get them because yeah, I have a lot. I still have a lot of bags to enjoy. A lot of even new ones that I haven't really enjoyed much yet so I definitely can't really exchange them right away. So maybe in the next few years but yeah, those are the bags that I really got my eye on this year. They are all really gorgeous bags and I hope one day I'll be able to get them in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below to help the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to connect with me in my socials, it's at TrishDLF. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you could. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you.